Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Diana Clark. I'm an interior decorator in San Diego, California. Well, if you're here today, I'm guessing it's because you have pets and you love them to pieces, but maybe you don't love what's happened to your house. Let's face it, pets have an incredible amount of, dare I say it, crap. They've got food bowls and leashes and collars and beds and gates and crates and toys and they shed and they scratch and what can I say? Before you know it, your house doesn't belong to you anymore. Well, I'm on a mission to help you beautify your home even while you're accommodating every single thing your pet wants or needs. So I hope that you will like this video, give it a thumbs up, and I also hope that you'll watch to the end because there are so many great tips here. Thanks a bunch and let's get started. As you can see, I have a number of topics that I'm going to cover in this video. And I will say right up front that most of them have to do with living with dogs because let's face it, dogs have a lot more paraphernalia than cats do. But stick with me because I have some good tips for how to live beautifully with your kitties as well. So starting off with food bowls, what I have to say on this subject is pretty simple. And that is, you don't just need to go to Petco or Chewy.com and buy the simple stainless steel or plastic dog bowl. Be creative. Do some Google searching. Look around your house and see what might be beautiful that could work. There are so many ways to do this. This gorgeous big boy is Ralph. Ralph lives in a one room loft and with the exception of the sofa, I think he's the biggest thing in the entire place. His owners have made a beautiful little setup to hold his food and water bowls and they store his food in that big basket. When it comes to dog and cat beds, in my opinion, there's absolutely no excuse to have one that doesn't go with the color scheme and the style of your home. Here's a few photos to get your creative juices flowing. I think if you do a simple Google search, you'll agree with me that the choices are almost limitless and you ought to be able to find something that's really divine. This adorable pug is my very own macaroon. I collect area rugs and I like to layer them, so I made him his very own little rug pile so he could sleep by the fireplace. Not everyone wants to put a dog in a crate, but if you're someone who does, you probably know what I'm talking about when I say that now we're getting into serious eyesore territory. Crates can be big and cumbersome and they can do some serious damage to the look of a room. And let's face it, if you do keep your dog in a crate, you no doubt want it to be out where the family is, which means the crate's gonna show. There's no getting around it. But you know what? Here again, in this day and age, there's no excuse to have an ugly dog crate. There are so many viable options now. Plus, a dog crate can do double duty as a bedside table or an end table or a place that you can set your TV on. It's just a whole big wonderful world out there when you're shopping for a good looking crate. I love this idea of using the space under a window seat to create a cozy hideaway for your doggy. And I love this idea even more. I can't think of a better use for that wasted space under the stairs. You probably already know what I'm going to say about treat jars. No, they do not need to be Tupperware containers. If you want to keep the treats out on the kitchen island or the kitchen counter or anywhere else in your house, like the mantle by the fireplace, why not put them in a really cool, attractive jar that goes with your home decor? The thing about leashes is, of course we want to keep them handy right by the door, but sometimes we don't have a place where we can hang them and have it look good. So, if you're in that situation, I would suggest putting the leash in a basket or a bowl or a tray, something that looks pretty instead of just tossing it on the tabletop. 
Do you need to keep your dog in or out of certain spaces? And are you using something really ugly to do that? Because you don't need to. In this day and age, there's a lot of great choices for wonderful looking gates that can match your home's decor. Dogs and cats need toys, that's for sure. And they're gonna pretty much toss them all over your house, that's for sure too. So what I think is, if you can buy toys, why not buy them in color schemes that look great with your house? Here again, a simple internet search will turn up toys in just about any color you can name. By matching the color of your toys to the colors in your home, they just don't bug you as much when they're lying around everywhere. What is it they say about rules? There's always an exception, and I made this exception at Christmas time for my pug. And where is it written that your pet's toys need to be kept in an ugly container, or even a container that says toys on it, which is mostly what you'll find online? I would encourage you to shop around for an interesting box or basket or some other container that doesn't necessarily look like it's for toys, and use it that way. You know that famous saying, cat's gotta scratch, cat's gotta climb? Well, I have a famous saying too. Yes, it's true they do, but the stuff they do it on does not need to be ugly. One of my favorite ways to protect furniture is to just toss a throw onto it. It's easy to put on and then it's just as easy to remove when you have actual humans coming over and it's super easy to throw in the washing machine. Of course you know I advocate for throws that are not only practical but also beautiful or fun or look good with your home decor. You know how cats love to sit on, sleep on, and of course scratch the arms of all of your nice furniture? Well, one cool solution is to get covers for the arms. And if you Google arm covers, you'll find a lot of choices. I think some of the ready-made ones can work really well as long as the color looks good with your existing furniture. But if you're upholstering a new piece, I would strongly suggest that you have arm covers made in the same upholstery fabric right when you're getting the job done. And I would even go further than that and say, have a few extra sets made because the cats will scratch them and wear them out and you'll wish you had some more. You can do the same thing with the back of some chairs. Just get a cover made that matches the existing upholstery. Before you buy a new piece of upholstered furniture or reupholster an old one, I would urge you to do it with your pets in mind. If you have your heart set on a fabric upholstery, then I would strongly urge you to choose a really tightly woven one that is super pet resistant. If you follow Metamorphosis Design on either Facebook or LinkedIn, you already know that I'm a huge fan of Sunbrella. Sunbrella makes wonderful fabrics that are meant to be weather resistant and fade resistant, but a lot of them are also very pet resistant. If it's within your budget though, I think the very best choice you can make is leather, as long as it's the super hard, sturdy leather, not butter soft leather. It's true that your pet's claws can scratch leather, but I say think of it as charming patina. Plus, there's a wonderful product that I always recommend called Leather Honey. And if you rub this on your leather furniture maybe once a year, it can work wonders even if your pet's been having its way with it. If you're choosing leather furniture, I think the very best choice you can make is a color that's the same color as your pet. Up till now, I've only talked about living beautifully with dogs and cats, but what if you have feathered friends, which I do. These are my Goldian Finches, Kaleidoscope and Tapestry. 
I think it's also important and possible to make all of your bird paraphernalia look wonderful in your home. Can you tell that as an interior decorator, I think it's every bit as important to be able to love your home as it is to love your pets? Yep, that's what I think. And I hope that this video has given you a few ideas that you might use. Go around your house, check it out, see what you can beautify. And I would love to hear from you in the comments if you've used any of these ideas. Feedback, as you know, is always pretty darn great. So I'm going to leave you with one last thought, my favorite thought of all. Stay safe, stay healthy, because I love you. <laughs>